Our topic this week is bilingual education, also known as English language learning. The generic form of bilingual education has a history that can be traced back thousands of years. In ancient Rome, an educated person was expected to know Greek as well as Latin. The European traditional education has always included the study of at least two languages. In developing countries throughout the world, a basic education usually included the study of two languages, one a home or regional language, and the second an international or commercial language. In the United States, from colonial times to World War I, many schools, and especially church-related schools, which then delivered a much more significant portion of the total education than they do today, taught English and a second language that reflected the ancestry or culture of the people of a region or neighborhood. Examples include German in Pennsylvania, Spanish in New Mexico and Texas, French in Louisiana, Hebrew in yeshivas, and Italian, Polish, and German in Catholic schools in New York City. After World War I, the study of second languages declined significantly because of a combination of factors, including a new nationalism and isolationism, the rise of public school education, and the subsequent decline of church-related education. In 1968, with the passing of the Elementary and Secondary Act, ESEA Title VIII, also referred to as the Bilingual Education Act, federal funds were provided for the first time to school districts to meet the needs of low-income students with limited English proficiency. Bilingual education was defined as a method of teaching a language to speakers of another language using the student's native language to some extent. As a result, a new era of bilingual education started in the United States that expanded as more and more immigrant children entered public schools. However, this new wave of bilingual education has not been without controversy and criticism. In June 1998, on a special referendum, otherwise known as Proposition 227, Voters in California ended extensive bilingual education programs in the public schools and replaced them with a one year of a structured English immersion program for all, for all LEP students. In our course documents, you will find an article by Ethan Broner that appeared in the New York Times shortly after the California referendum. Please read and comment on the analysis provided by Broner. Especially, do you agree with his basic premise that the story of bilingual education, its rise in the 1960s, preceded by little research or experience, its mushrooming bureaucracy, the passion of its ill-prepared implementation, and in California at least, its sudden abandonment for an equally unproved method is the story of American education.